Hello and welcome back to this new video about the structure of the book. I have recorded three more about the races of the continent, but I thought it would be good to do some more of the actual writing on the source book that I'm doing and not the lore of the world itself. Um, and so this one is about the classes and where we are right now. My original plan for the source book was not to touch the classes of D&D 5e at all. I wanted to keep them as they are to make them compatible with the setting and with the books that people have already. And I don't need to get into how the classes work right now and all the changes and la la la. And I never liked this that much because the magic in the world works a bit different and some of the classes just don't work the same way they do or they have a different different fluff. And so the idea was that I would change the fluff for most of these classes only and do some mechanical stuff here and there on the surface where it's really necessary, but keep them as they are. So into this comes D&D 1. And there are wonderful changes that they do to some of the stuff in D&D, to the classes, of course, as well. And of course, this is all, strictly speaking, like beta alpha, what they do right now. And I can't wait for them to finish the indie one to then adjust that to my setting that just takes too much time and so i thought alrighty you know i will watch what they do in the indie one build an overview of how the balancing works in dnd 5e right now then compare dnd one to that put like stuff in there that i like from what they do but then also change how classes work and stuff they can do because then i have more control of how this works in the world, and this gives people a different way to play D&D. And so because of this, I did a mind map. Of course I did. What did you expect? And um, these are some of the classes that I could think of, uh, that I could add, or that exist already, but it's not final and I, I assume this will be reduced in number and we will not have that many classes and probably most of them will become subclasses uh, or like fluff only so we have the barbarian and the fighter and the fighter will change because to me it's really like bare bones it doesn't really have its own like identity so it, it either gets more fluff options for example in this context here the knight or um, more subclasses that will specialize it in a specific way of fighting, in a specific identity um, that is maybe not so bland as the fighter is right now. Then we have the Lancer, which comes from Final Fantasy XIV. You will see some of the race, some of the classes from Final Fantasy XIV here, actually. Um, the Lancer is, as the name suggests, a Lancing class. So this most likely will become a subclass of the fighter. Pretty sure. So it's about movement, about distance, about using the distance to your to your enemy and stuff like this. Samurai also most likely will come a subclass of the fighter. I'm not sure there though because the samurai should work as it does in Final Fantasy XIV. That it's a lot about building momentum, waiting for for the correct time and then strike when it's most useful. So it's about positioning and probably I will try something that you like charge your attack over multiple rounds and then when you unleash it, it's more powerful. To... I have no idea, but that's an idea. So we have the rogue, of course. We have the monk, nothing new there. Then we have a shield tank. We're also not sure how this works exactly. Maybe it becomes a subclass of the fighter. Maybe it becomes a subclass of paladin. I don't know. It's a non-religious tank that has heavy armor but is using like barrier spells and stuff to help itself and and also its team. Then with the Paladin and the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is probably then like the Oath Breaker Paladin. Uh, the Cleric, of course. The Ranger, which I probably will change that it's a bit more going back to more like more like an Aragorn type feeling. So more like Wandering through the forests alone, surviving stuff, hard to kill, but a bit more rough on the edges, more like this. The warlock, of course, mage, sorcerer, so this is all what we have so far, and then we have the black mage. The black mage will hopefully, if I can pull this off, work like the black mage in Final Fantasy XIV, meaning you are switching between 
fire and ice magic. Ice magic gives you mana back and fire magic does damage mostly. And both are increasing in cost and damage the more you keep this, keep this rotation up with both. No idea if that is in any way doable in D&D, but I really like how it feels in Final Fantasy XIV. So maybe this makes it a bit more interesting, but I have to try this out to see if that works. And depending on how it works, uh, could become a subclass as well. Orion's Hand probably will become a subclass. I'm pretty sure that thing does not stay the way it is. That's a fire-themed mage. There's only fire. And it can also go in a bit more of a melee version where it has like swords and uses magic only as a tool. <laughs> I had no idea. This will be a long way to go here. Uh, the Light Mage, we don't have yet. No idea if that thing actually will exist in the world. The Order of Valen is a Thunder Mage, same here. Exists as a player class already. Uh, had it in a one-shot where it worked pretty well. But I could see this being a bit too boring for uh, a whole class if this is the only thing that you can do so we'll see but so far it was, was okay then the source so where does these classes come from this is all just mind mapping here so no no final final ideas uh, so far most likely i will go with the institutions like you either learn it from your culture or you learn this from some institution where you went can can be order a school a guild or whatever where you learn how to how to do this. Then, of course, we have the mixed classes, which is the druid, the bard. The bard probably will move into a less of a caster as it is right now, or into a total psychological warfare caster. One of two things, we'll see. Red mage, exactly, uh, is a bit of a problem because it kind of is like a bard, but from a fighting isn't. So it's more like a musketeer. <laughs> so I have no idea. That could be interesting. Then, of course, we have the Artificer, which is identical to the Mechanist in Final Fantasy XIV from a theme, not how they play, but from a theme. And the Geomant is more like an Indiana Jones Earth-based Earth crawler guy. Like he likes dirt. <laughs> um, that's the idea with him. Had one in a group, was okay, but I'm not sure if that works in the long run. Then we have the White Mage from Fun Fantasy. This is Pure healer. Here again, if this works in d and I have no idea. We have to look into this. The Astrologian, which I really like to put into d and because it's an amazing class, probably has to change a bit here as well. How this works with like the, the card to row reading and stuff. No idea. But we'll see. So the Scholar, which I will refluff in a Fey Wild healer. How that works exactly? No idea. Do we have a fate that heals people like in Final Fantasy? I don't know. We'll see, but I will try. Do we have the Sage? This will be really fun or not fun to, to build because I have no idea. So it's more like a shield healer. So it's not about healing. It's more like more reducing damage that your party gets. And I think that could work pretty well in D&D as well, but the turn ecology here could be a problem. So we will see. The Ghost Healer, the Mystic is from... Ion? I don't know. I have, haven't played it. But I've heard the idea from uh, one other MMO, which doesn't exist anymore, where you were just putting out orbs and people had to go there to get healing. Could work. No idea. Uh, green Mage, more like Toxin, Poison, uh, Alchemy Healer or a Dot Healer. So he gives, like, gives you, uh, I don't know, a buff. Because the dot is not a buff, but it's a thing, like, over time. I don't know, maybe he does the dot on the enemy and the enemy heals you. I've no idea. Uh, and the water mage, which worked pretty well, actually, uh, in the one shot that we did. And um, that is a healer that is based on water. Because water in the world is for healing. Like, this is where this comes from. But here again, I haven't really looked into this. It's mostly copy-paste. Uh, so this is nothing final um and i'm not working on that here right now right now i'm working on writing down a base character of each class that we have in DD right now so we start with the barbarian and then build and continue that build with each uh like specialization that you can choose 
And so I get an idea of what the like average HP, um, average damage output and average critical damage is that this class can do at each level. So that when I have this overview of all the D&D classes as they are right now, I can then try to use this data to build the classes that I have and change the stuff that I want to change and have a better the better idea of how this actually should look like because right now I really don't. And so I mostly work on this stuff live right now. If you want to watch this, uh, you are welcome to join us on Twitch. And that's all about the classes right now. The goal in the end is to give more uh, options for more specific fluff and specialization that I feel is not there yet or that I like in other games. Um, but not to do as many classes as you see right now. I think this is a bit too much. So we have to see uh, if I can make them as interesting and as different enough to say this class has a reason to exist. But also the main goal is then also to build them in a way that they are less powerful than what we have in D&D right now to supplement the changes to the D&D system that I have been speaking about to in the last video of this playlist, I think. Should be right before this one. So this should all play into it. But right now I still have to build all of this data to then hopefully have a better idea of how to change it and how this works. And a lot of work. It's fun, but it's a lot of work. I never, never wanted to touch the classes for that reason because it's so much work, but we'll see. So thank you for watching. If you have more questions, you can ask them in the comments below or of course live on Twitch or on our Discord. So thank you again and until next time, bye-bye.